Hey there, this is Anthony Gordon with Avid coming at you from South by Southwest 2011. Uh, and I'm here with Jaime Villa, Villanueva of the band Hacienda. How you doing, dude? I'm doing good. Uh, so tell us what brings you out to South by and what you have going on with the band. Uh, we've just been playing a bunch of showcases all week. Uh, I mean, we've done probably about four already and we got two left. And then, uh, yeah, just getting playing a lot of shows and then we'll leave for tour in, on Tuesday. Yeah. It's coming up in a few days. Who are you going out with? Uh, this band, the Greenhorns. Oh, fantastic band. That'll be killer. Yeah, it's been pumped. So uh, after that, you have some recording coming up for your third album. Yeah. You're going up to Nashville for that, right? Yeah, we'll be going up in, probably in July yeah. to finish up uh, the third record, yeah. How do you approach a third record differently than a first or second record creatively? Uh, we've just been wanting this album to be really focused. So we wanted instrumentation and arrangement especially to be like the same instruments every time the same drum kit the same guitar and just have a really consistent sound throughout the whole record and make it a really clear picture of like the way our band is today you know and uh, just getting that headspace of keeping things simple and and uh, yeah as big as it can be but with just us four people so. that's interesting because today uh in the music industry, everyone talks about it's all about the downloadable single and the death of the album. Uh, but it sounds like the approach you guys are taking on this is kind of the older school approach where like, it's a full album, there's continuity, it's meant to live as like right. this one collection of songs. Well, it's, it's a little bit of both. It's, uh, as an album, I think if you have that old kind of mentality of making the album really a cohesive picture, and then you just, you really spend time and focusing on those two or three songs that you want to stand out as singles. You can really, if everything's cohesive behind those singles also, I think it, it, it pushes it forward, you know? And really makes it a whole package as a band where you're not just buying into the singles or just that song, you're buying into the whole experience of going to a show and buying the album and seeing the band and relating with everybody, you know? I think it's trying to have that all in, in mind while writing songs as at as early as you know a stage you can be really helps out in the end do you ever find as you come to the completion of an album the songs that you thought was the standout track or the song that you thought was the single maybe is the second single or the third single and there's songs that you had that you thought were deep cuts yeah. and you reevaluated re them once you've kind of heard them in the context of everything else yeah it's definitely that it's sometimes it comes out where you're just, uh, you know, you're at the very end of your recording time or whatever, and then you're just like, oh yeah, we have this extra song, and then you just arrange it right there on the spot, and that ends up being like something just captured a whole vibe that you just have no idea that it came out to be the best song, you know? It's just, I don't know. You can't really predict what's going to catch on with people. You just try and make, I don't know. What we try and do is just hopefully try and make every song a single. You know, and but when, that's why when you have that mindset of keeping the instrumentation all the same and the players all the same, and uh, it's going to go all together. It's not going to feel like singles. It's going to feel like an album. You know, killer. So you guys uh, definitely have like a very organic vibe to your sound, to your band. Uh, and I understand that you are coming from uh, largely like vintage audio kind of workflow in the past. Uh, which is awesome and it's a beautiful romantic sound, it's a romantic ideal. But now you're moving into the world of digital recording as well. Can you tell me why uh, you want to be incorporating the digital workflow and the Pro Tools workflow into, uh, into what you're doing? And do you feel like you are going to have to make any compromises as far as like keeping it as, as real and organic as it is? <laughs> uh, well, basically... Is that way too small? Uh, basically, yeah, we came from a world of, you know, 50s and 60s gear and studying all the old uh, studios, Stax Records, you know, Motown and, and uh, yeah, Muscle Shoals, all those great studios. But it was, being in today's world, things move really fast and you want to have, like, as much content as you can also. Like, you can't really have too many songs, you know? And uh, I think just moving into the digital world and and recording uh, with both mindsets in place makes for things really, really fast. Like uh, the old way, 
is really recording uh, a lot of people live in a room, all your instrumentation, and you maybe do vocals overdubbed, or maybe you do vocals live also. And that's a quick way of working if uh, if you have a setup that you're recording to that you can mix and post, you know, with ease. And that's what Pro Tools does, is that you can run it like an old tape machine, but it's not going to have all the kinks and the weird problems, and you don't need a guy just sitting there, you know, making sure your machine's calibrated and making sure that he's changing out tapes and all this other stuff. You just let it run, and then... Uh, you know, set up some marks and then you come back to it. And it's like having a perfectly running, amazing sounding mach tape machine, you know, at your disposal uh, all the time. And it's incredible. Would and you? always with you, too. You know what I mean? You don't have to be in the studio. You could be in the van working on music. I think that that, that liberating aspect of, uh, of being able to work on music has always been something that's been pretty cool to me. Yeah, and I think the technology is just shot off so far like right now that you're getting extreme fidelity like where it's it's mind-blowing how good this stuff is sounding you know and uh, if you ignored that and tried to just say that only the old stuff sounded that way then it's you're you know missing the mark you're missing the point so uh, yeah I think just the ease and the and the way that you can blend both worlds is just incredible, you know. I don't and know. still keep it absolutely true to your uh, your artistic vision that you have for for what you're doing with your band. Yeah, and it still has total vibe and stuff. There's a lot of new plugins coming out that uh, are meant to emulate, you know, adding warmth and that old school kind of vibe to stuff that people say is magic. But if you there's like the heat stuff, I, I was re watching an interview with the guy that created all that Crane Song stuff. Yeah, Dave Hill. Yeah, just, you know, he knows his shit. And he knows all the old stuff, but he's incorporated into the new world where you can get that sound, that warmth, that, uh, that you, you know, maybe you couldn't get until now that there's these people that are paying attention to that kind of stuff and yeah. wanting to bridge the two worlds, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's really an amazing time, you know, to, to be around in the recording business. It's totally changing the whole music business is changing and I don't know I like to feel like the, the the way you record is also changing with that you know it's cool well if people want to find out uh, where to go see you guys on your upcoming tour and how to get your records where would they go uh, you could go onto our website uh, haciendaonline.net or our Facebook and Twitter and uh, yeah just look around for us at a lot of record shops you know your favorite uh, local indie shop, I guess. You'll yeah. see us there. Uh, Aquarius Records in San Francisco. I'll just give that one a shout out. That's mine. Yeah. Well, Killer, thanks for taking the time to speak to us. I know you got a gig here in a second. Yeah. And uh, break a leg. Have a good uh, time making your new record out in Nashville. And uh, we'll see you next time from South by Southwest 2011.